Welcome to the uh, SharePoint Business Intelligence webcast. Uh, my name is Keith Long. I head up the Microsoft practice here at Ironworks, and we'll be giving you a brief uh, look here as we get started. Um, Ironworks was started in 2001. We've got about 250 employees. We have uh, offices in Richmond, Washington, D.C., Raleigh, Charlotte, Atlanta, and Minneapolis. Uh, we focus from an industry perspective on healthcare, government, not-for-profit, and financial services. Uh, as a general overview, we are a project-based consulting company. Uh, we have a background in enterprise con uh, content management with portal integration. We do a significant amount of business intelligence work. Uh, we offer a program management office and management consulting group. And we also have a heavy focus in interactive and user-centric design uh, that spans across all of our practices. Uh, from a competitive perspective, we, we look at ourselves as being large enough to handle the, the big projects that are out there, but we have uh, a little bit more uh, ability to change quickly and adapt to the market, so we, we find ourselves in a nice niche uh, location within the market. We have very senior resources. Uh, most, if not all of them, are over 10 years of experience, uh, and most of our clients are repeat customers. Uh, so, and a lot of that is driven by the fact that we focus heavily on results-driven. Jessica Moss is going to be our presenter today, and with that, I will hand it off to her to let her do a quick background on herself, and we'll get started. Great. Thanks, Keith. And I'd also like to thank Ironworks and Microsoft for helping to sponsor both this event and our entire webcast series. So just a little bit about me. Uh, I am a Microsoft SQL Server MVP. I specialize in business intelligence, so that's going to include integration services, analysis services, reporting services, and of course, what we'll be talking about today, performance point services. I'm a business intelligence architect and a published author, international speaker, and community leader. Essentially, I really enjoy giving these presentations and helping to uh, teach people how they can use business intelligence within their organization. Specifically from a SharePoint perspective, I have worked with both Performance Point Server 2007 and Performance Point Services 2010. I've worked with reporting services integrated with SharePoint, handling both of that, um, both those reports within SharePoint and without. And I've been involved in multiple uh, projects that combine both SharePoint and business intelligence. Talked a little bit about my BI experience. Um, and really enjoy helping companies figure out what their business processes should be and how they can really analyze that information to help their businesses grow. And finally, that's my blog address up there, jessicamoss.com, where you can read more about uh, some of the products that I use. So jumping right into our presentation today, we're going to be talking about performance management, specifically what is that and how it can help you and your organization. We'll go over different methodologies that you can use, take an overview of SharePoint 2010, and then inside of SharePoint 2010, performance point services. We'll go through all the steps of creating a dashboard, and then go through some implementation and design best practices. As Keith mentioned, we'll go ahead and take some questions and answers at the end. Now, as we're going through, please feel free to, to put those questions in. Uh, we'll go ahead and queue them up and get to them right at the end of the presentation. Great. So let's start with what is performance management. Now, this is a, a methodology that uh, that we actually use. We combine different methodologies that we have and tools that help us to monitor, analyze, and optimize our business processes and results. So what we're going for here is finding a way to take our corporate goals that we have that are associated with a business strategy and track how they are being achieved over time. So every company has a set of strategic goals that they're concerned with. That's going to come down from your upper management. And each of those goals, the, the strategies that you have, need to have goals that are associated with them. Each of these goals should be, be very objective and allow you to relate different KPIs or key performance indicators that you have to an individual strategy. And we want to see over time how we're progressing towards achieving those particular goals. Once we know how we're doing with those goals, we're going to take those results and turn it around and utilize that within our business so that we can make um, 
uh, proactive changes and make sure that we're on track to achieve our strategic goals. So we need to see what the current state of the process is, how we're doing. This is where you're, you're going to think of your typical stoplight, red, yellow, green. Where red, we're not doing so well, yellow is just eh, and green, we're fine, we're happy with it, don't need to, to worry about it at all. That comparison that we're doing of what we expect versus what we actually have is going to tell us how we're doing with those stoplight colors. If we're leaning towards the yellow or the red, we need to make those changes, make new decisions, and make sure that we're on, back on track to get us back to that green layer. And this is something that you can do um, across an organization. You can do it at an individual employee level, you can do it at a department level, or an entire company to ensure that everybody's doing what they need to to make the company succeed. And really the reason that we're doing this, the, the whole methodology in place, putting these tools in place and tracking and monitoring it and being able to do this, is to ensure that we are helping the organization. So what this is going to do is actually give you goals to achieve and ways to track how you're achieving it. So your organization's performance and activities are going to improve because you're going to be able to see how well you're doing, if you can actually um, if the, the processes that you're currently using, if how you're um, running your business is actually working for you. You're going to be able to allow your employees to make, the, make their decisions more quickly um, and responsibly so that they can go and see. We did, um, as an example, um, let's say we sold uh, 200 items yesterday. Well, our goal for the entire week is going to be 6,000. Well, we know our 200 compared to 6,000, we're not doing so well for the week. So your employees will immediately be able to see that we have a deficit there, go in, make changes, whatever they need to do to get us back on track. You're also going to receive consistent and conformed analytical information. So what this is going to give you is a way to see the exact same information, no matter what aspect or what part of the company you're working with. So you know that uh, whether it is a salesperson looking at how, what your sales are, or whether it's an HR person looking at the, at the sales, or your operations, that everybody's looking at the same set of information, so everybody's on the same track. And then finally, this creates an enterprise solution that will incorporate all aspects of the business. So because we have every single piece on track, at a very high level, we'll be able to see what our full organization is doing. So there are a couple of different ways that we think about performance management. A couple of the standard ones that are out there are listed here, balance scorecard and the digital dashboard. Now the balance scorecard is something that was written up by Kaplan and Norton a few years back and really tries to give you an overview of the entire company by breaking it down into four different categories. And these categories are customer, financial, learning and growth, or internal business processes. And there's also a um, kind of parallel for um, track where it's the principle, finance, operations, sales, and human resources. Either way, it's four different pieces that you have for your organization that really give you that overarching view. And you determine what your objectives are within each of those categories, what you're trying to achieve. Within those objectives, you're going to break that up into measures. These are specific things that you can track to ensure that your company is on track. And then finally, targets. And targets are going to say what you're, how much you're trying to achieve, what your goals are. And then initiatives are going to be what you will do to accomplish those. Sometimes you'll see the balance scorecard in a strategy map, uh, which has the bubbles with arrows that link up to each other to show how at each lower level it grows and becomes a, a company looked view of your uh, whole organization. The next methodology we have is more of a digital dashboard. And what this is is it shows you at a high level what you have, uh, what your company is doing. And you're able to drill down into each item to really see the details and the um, uh, items that will 
tell you how your company is doing. So the picture that we have here is of the, a map of the United States. This shows a number of applications for each company. And you can see what the states are that are red and actually be able to click on each of those and drill into another report or another piece of analytics to show what each of the counties are within there and how they're doing or see all the actual applicants themselves. Now, over time, uh, these different methodologies have changed. Um, there's been discussion about how whether um, these particular methodologies have actually been useful or not. Um, a lot of times it, it takes a while to come up with these different pieces for the entire enterprise organization. So it can take so long to get these in place um, that it makes it a little bit harder uh, by the end of it to make sure you have that full company view. But the principles that we have here, the ideas of objectives, measures, targets, and being able to drill down into that data is applicable across all performance management. So specifically, uh, in Microsoft, uh, the performance management piece lives inside of SharePoint 2010. Now, SharePoint 2010 um, that just came out uh, is a really great version of the, the previous SharePoint servers that we've had. It takes all of these different pieces that we can see here, different sites, communities, composites, content, search, and insights, and makes it a full enterprise solution that is tightly integrated together. And even when we're talking specifically about the business intelligence piece, not only does that fit into the insights uh, section, which is in the bottom left corner, but it also fits into the search and the content and the communities. So you can see how even though each of the items have been broken out, they really mesh very tightly together. But specifically the insights portion that we have, the first item you'll see is performance point services, which is the performance management discussion that we're going to have today. Excel services actually gives you a calculation engine inside of Excel to allow you to uh, collaborate on particular Excel spreadsheets and share them across your organization. There are charts and video services which will allow you to share some of the analytical type information that you've gotten from your organization. Web analytics integration with SQL Server are um, aspects that allow you to pull in things from your other applications that you have. And then finally, Power Pivot, which is just released um, in the latest version of, of SQL Server and ties directly into SharePoint, allows you to mash up data from different sources into a ad hoc reporting tool directly in Excel and display it within SharePoint 2010. So really the SharePoint is giving you this full business intelligence platform along with all of the other types of items you could possibly want in this portal application. So that brings us to Performance Point Services 2010. And this is how we handle it inside of SharePoint all of our business analytics and our uh, business insights that we want to show. So this gives us an entire system that includes the portal-based dashboard server, so the easy-to-end user tool to build different dashboards, scorecards, and KPIs. And this is providing us with tools to both monitor and analyze our business data. Now specifically, those, those are all the components of Performance Point Services that gets provided to us. We have a couple of different components. So we have our monitoring piece, which allows us to visualize our goals and strategy that we've been talking about from a performance management system. We can present reports and information. And this is something that's it's really driven from an analytical perspective. And you want to be showing these reports and these information they can help uh, the employees that you have build their um, company and, and do their job better. These aren't operational reports where you have, um, you're going to see uh, what you need to do from a, an XYZ perspective, um, list of addresses to call, or sorry, phone numbers to call, or, or addresses to send to. Be really the analytical data. And it also compiles data from multiple sources. So. 
you can go ahead and bring information from your data warehouse, from an Excel spreadsheet, from an access database, all inside of performance point services. And the second part of what we're going to, to look at with performance point services is analysis. And really what we're doing is providing some drill down analysis there, being able to go from a very high level down to a lower level. And we're going to go ahead and try to simplify our complex information. So make sure that it's as easy as possible um, to go ahead and see that information and pull out the information that's needed. And then finally, forecasting and trending data, being able to see what the patterns are over time and being able to see how that affects what we do in the future. So to actually put all of this in place, create our performance management strategy, and use performance point services, the end goal of what we're trying to make is a dashboard. So these are the different steps that we go through to create our dashboard. The first one is going to be to download Dashboard Designer. And we'll go ahead and sync all the information from our server, uh, try to create a workspace, and then create and configure elements from within our workspace. To figure the dashboard, which will include all of those different pieces, and then deploy the dashboard up to SharePoint so that it can be shared across the organization. So let's look at each of those pieces in more detail. The first one that we have is Download Dashboard Designer. A Dashboard Designer is a, a one-click application um, which will be downloaded to each business user's computer. And what this means is that you can go to one of your SharePoint pages, click on your Start Using Performance Services, um, and then begin using with the Dashboard Designer, and it will automatically download for you. Once you've downloaded it once, if you go back to that page, it will look for it on your computer, realize that it's there, and then just bring up that application. Once you've downloaded it, you can open it up directly from your computer. It is installed on your machine, and you can build your dashboard that way. Now, you are going to need to turn on your Business Intelligence Center feature within SharePoint to be able to download this dashboard designer and be able to publish those different items. Once we've got Dashboard Designer on our um, computer, then we're going to want to start getting ready to put up this information. So the first one we're going to want to do is sync everything we've got up on the server. <clears throat> so we store all of the elements for our dashboard on the Performance Point server itself. And when I say Performance Point server here, this is SharePoint. These, all of the information is stored within SharePoint lists within SharePoint. Um, once we've brought everything down from the server level for Performance Point, we can go ahead and change any of those items, add new ones, delete them, um, so that we can actually do the development on our machine. Well, how we're doing that development on our own machine is on a workspace. And this is the local copy that you have on your machine. Once you've gone ahead and, and brought down the elements from the server and made any changes on your machine, you can then publish each item independently or all together back up to the server for other people to see. Until you want to actually do the publishing, those items are only on your machine. So you can test them out, you can make sure that they're working correctly before you let anybody else take a look at them. Now, keep in mind, this dashboard designer that we're working with, this is meant for business users. This is an end-user platform. Uh, when you actually look at the dashboard designer, it has the office ribbon on it. It is meant for um, somebody to be able to pick up and start doing the uh, changes and making all of these decisions uh, from the analyst side of things because they're the ones that really are the closest to this data. So once we've got our workspace set up, we've brought everything down from our environment, we're going to start looking at the individual elements themselves. So the very first thing that you're going to want to create is a data source. Uh, we'll go ahead and create these to be used for both our KPIs, our scorecards, and our reports. And this is where you're actually getting the data from. The particular types of data sources that we have here 
are multidimensional, which is analysis services, and then our tabular list items, which includes Excel services, import from Excel workbook, SharePoint list, and SQL Server table. So really, we're able to bring information from a data warehouse, from an Excel spreadsheet, from something inside of SharePoint, or a regular SQL Server table to display this information. The other aspect of data sources that we need to be concerned with is time intelligence. And this is something that really is a, a great addition to performance point services, and this gives you a lot of power. What you're able to do is tie the um, uh, time intelligence that's built into performance point services to dates within your data source. So as an example, analysis services, you create a, a date dimension. And your date dimension, you specify a day, a month, a quarter, and a year. You assign that, that same day, month, quarter, year from your analysis services data source to the time intelligence feature within performance point services. Once you map together within performance point services, within some of our filters and our items later on, we'll be able to actually use that built-in date that we have there and be able to do very advanced date calculations, period to date functions, parallel period, getting the current date, all of that great information. We'll go into those time intelligence features in just a minute. Once we've got our data source set up, then we're going to move on to actually setting up our KPIs. Now, our key KPIs, our key performance indicators, are what gives us a lot of the data that we're concerned with. So this is going to contain an actual value, a target value, and then threshold values that tell you how well you're doing. To actually create those, you start with an objective. Now, your objective is very high level, so it could be something along the lines of, we want to increase profitability. Then we're going to say develop the quantitative measure of that objective. So if our objective is to increase profitability, there are a couple of different measures that we can come up with for that. We can say we want to um, increase our gross sales. And for a second one, we'll say we want to go ahead and decrease our cost. And both of those uh, particular measures will roll up and tell us if we've actually succeeded in our objective. We'll set our goal or our target. Now, that goal or target could be a, a percentage uh, based on um, uh, this, what we've actually achieved compared to uh, a previous value. Or it could be a set number um, that we've just decided. We would like to uh, reach a, a profitability number of, of X. Uh, or it could be something that you're bringing in from another source that you're doing that comparison to. And then finally, you'll set your thresholds to determine that outcome. And those thresholds are going to say, with that stoplight, um, same scenario that we were talking about, if we are well within, if we're happy with how we're doing, if we think there might be some improvement that we need, or if, hey, we, we've really got a problem that, that we need to figure out. We can also create um, objectives, which is different than the objective that we, that we were just talking about. But this groups related KPIs together, which is going to create a, a hierarchy for us. This allows us to roll up those values so we get one highest level value of how we're doing. Uh, depending on how, what the objective is and what the underlying KPIs are, there are different ways of rolling up that data um, to be able to see what that highest level objective value will be. So, for example, you can use an average of all of the children, say if it's sales, or you can use the minimum or maximum of all of the children. So, if, for example, if any of the, the child KPIs are not doing well, then we're going to say this entire piece is not doing well, and we really need to take a look at it. Once we've got all of our KPIs set up, we're going to include those in a scorecard. Now, KPIs can't be shown directly on a dashboard. You have to put it inside of a scorecard. But this is really where you get that full display, and you're able to do 
uh, some of your filtering and monitoring of the KPI. Because this really gives you all of those KPIs and objectives together measure that organization's performance and health. Putting those into different layers, depending on what your metrics are, depending on what your different pieces are, you can go ahead and create balance scorecards or digital dashboards, just like the methodologies that we were talking about from before. The different types that we have here are going to be where we're pulling our KPIs from. So you can pull your uh, KPI that you've created within analysis services directly into a scorecard. You can have fixed values that you're using. So if you wanted to pull uh, one value from a, uh, let's say, a SQL Server table and then hard code a value, if these are targets that, that you're working on yourself, you can do that. You can use Excel services or, or Excel workbook. Um, it's very common to find that a lot of times um, if you're doing, a, a particularly retail companies, if they're doing forecasting numbers, um, a lot of that, that's a little bit of, um, I'm going to call it magic. Uh, they're working on, they're looking at past numbers, they're adding this, they're determining this. Um, these analysts just have this information in their head, and they actually put the information directly into an Excel workbook, and that's the source of information. So you can pull the information from that Excel workbook into your performance point services scorecard. You can also use a SharePoint list or a SQL, save, SQL server table to bring that information in. The next item that we can use within our dashboard is going to be our reports. Now our reports Our reports are going to allow us to show the information for, for the analytical piece of things. Um, this is included in Dashboard to enable further analysis that we have. Um, the report types that we have available to us are an analytical chart, an analytical grid, Excel services, KPI details, for Clarity Analytics server page, reporting services, a strategy map, and a web page. Now the analytical chart and analytical grid are things that we can actually create inside of uh, performance point services that will allow us to show information from analysis services. We can go ahead and put different items on our columns and our rows and go ahead and see that information. The uh, Excel services that we have is um, going to be able to provide information from an Excel workbook. KPI details is actually new in 2010. The information that we have there is going to be from a scorecard. What we're going to see is that the scorecard, uh, you can click on any particular KPI and see all of the information about it, the different measures that it was used to actually come up with the KPI. The Brocularity Analytics Server page is something that comes from one of the legacy versions that we have. Part of Performance Point Services was built on the Proclarity platform. And you could, could create pages for them and go ahead into, um, and display that directly through Performance Point Services. Probably not something we're going to recommend for the future because you can get a lot of that same information at this point using the analytic chart or the analytical grid. And we're going to make sure that they can be as supported as possible, the best way of being supported through those different versions. The reporting services piece that we have are reports that have already been deployed to the report server. So if you've got them out there, you can allow performance, you can have performance point services point to a URL and display the report from that server. Strategy map we talked about, that typically comes from um, Microsoft Visio and is great to show balanced scorecards as they grow um, over time. And then finally, a web page. So if you want to go ahead and uh, link from a um, list of stores that you have and you'd like to show that location um, using uh, Bing um, a search through that or through some sort of mapping program, you can absolutely do that as well. The next item that we have 
are going to be filters. Now, filters allow us to parameterize the different reports and scorecards that we have. We're going to go ahead and add those filters uh, to the dashboard and link them up to the reports or scorecards. The types of filters that we can have are a custom table, and that will allow us to pull the information directly in. An MDX query or member selection or name set, those three are going to be from analysis services and allow you to show a list of items that can be selected. The last two that we have are the time intelligence and time intelligence connection formula. Now, this is where we start. When we set up our data source and we set up the time intelligence piece there to be able to hook up those particular items, this is where that comes into play. So if we're using uh, one of the time intelligence filters, the connection formula that we have is going to be able to um, allow us to do it dynamically. We can specify that we would like to show um, a, a particular day minus one. So let's say we want to say that's going to be yesterday. Or we can say we want to say month minus one, it last month. And that is a value that will show up within our filter. We can also show a series of them. So if we wanted to say um, a particular set of uh, values, so um, this is actually new in Performance Point Services 2010, or the, the period to date function. So we could actually say quarter to date, um, which is going to give us all of the months that we have for this past quarter. And any user can go through and select which months they're interested in to display the data. And the great part about the time intelligence is as time goes on, it will automatically update. So without anybody having to go in and change the date or make any modifications to the dashboard, it will automatically be giving you the latest set of months. And the final thing that we have in this filters piece is that it's going to store each, um, all the selections for each user. So you have multiple users that are going to come to this performance point services dashboard, and the, whatever filter value they select will be saved for the next time that they come into it. So specifically, um, if you've got a set of department heads that each one are concerned with their particular department, the first time they go in, they'll select the one department they're concerned with, and then after that, it will always come up to their particular set of information that they're concerned with. So now that we've created all of those different elements, we've set everything up, we're going to put it all into a dashboard. And the dashboard is what encapsulates all of those different elements to provide that full visualization of the strategy of the business and breaks it down into all of the different objectives. The point of the dashboard is to show the most important information in a succinct and summarized fashion. As quickly as possible, you want to be able to see all of the information that's specific to you, what you're concerned with, and what you need to do to get your job done. When you're creating that dashboard in the dashboard designer, you bring all of the different elements that we were talking about together. The scorecards, the reports, and the filters are going to be uh, included on all of the different zones within the dashboard itself. You're going to go ahead and tie your filters to your different reports and your scorecards. So the filter is going to have a set of information associated with it, the display value and then the actual value behind the scenes and you say how that filter is going to modify or change the scorecard or the report. You link all of those together, and then you can deploy it up to SharePoint. Once you deploy that dashboard up to SharePoint, each dashboard that you create will have its own page, and each of the items can be accessed through SharePoint's other web parts by using a Performance Point Services item web part. So it will go ahead and tie directly in to your entire SharePoint system. So you can um, use any customized um, templates that you need to or design principles, and the Performance Point dashboard will use the same template. So now that we've gone ahead and put all of this together, 
we've gone ahead and deployed it, uh, deployed it, we end up with something that looks like this. Now, this is our final product. This is something that uh, we created at Ironworks. And it's for a um, fictional company, actually, but called the, the Credit Institution. Um, and we actually were able to um, use our user experience team um, and our business intelligence team to go ahead and pull this demo together. So this is a credit institution, and this is uh, directly SharePoint. You can see on the first page on the left, we have a scorecard with each of the items from a financial organization that they're concerned with. So the number of solicitations that they've reached, um, so how they've reached out to people, and how well they actually got returns from those reaches. The applications that people had submitted, um, and how many of those were returning customers web statistics, so the number of clicks for particular sites, and then our insights. And this is where we really pull all of the information in together that we've uh, received from this financial organization. Who's at risk? Who's unprofitable? Who's been late? To know who we need to contact and how we can actually keep these people moving and utilizing our company. Over on the right, we can see a couple of, of the charts that are Actually, on the, the main screen, they're, they're uh, below the scorecard, but my real estate on the, the slide was a little bit different. Um, but the top we have is a pie chart, which has the number of approved applications within each particular branch. And then underneath, we can see the unprofitable customers um, per each FICO score category. Now, for each of those charts, when it's actually in the SharePoint version, uh, you'll be able to go ahead and right-click on those drill down into detail or drill across to be able to see those placed by different views as well. If we go ahead and uh, look at our next page, we're going into a full customer list that we have here. And this is going to be something that you can either click through from either from the scorecard or one of the charts on the first page and just look at a set of customers or you can look at your entire list of customers here to be able to pull that information in. This allows you to see what your customers are and what their different groupings or, or focuses are. If we were to click on any one of these customers, that would bring us to our customer detail page. Customer detail is going to give us all of the information that we just displayed. So the examples that we have there are uh, the very first person we have is Alfonso Abbott, and we can see all of the details for him. That's going to be the different type of um, details that we were aggregating at the top level. So this really shows you how we, we took a very high-level aggregation and drilled down, drilled down even further into either one of those uh, different customers. Here we can also look to see if we need to actually contact those people or make any sort of changes within that, um, within that group. And then finally, I wanted to pull this out here. Um, this is the full report library we have. So even all of the dashboard pages uh, that we have created and put out to the credit institution website are listed just like a regular SharePoint page. So you're able to go in and see those. They have um, their version history, their check-in, their check-out history. And you can go ahead and export them or save them out or back them up, just like you would any other SharePoint item. And then in the bottom right, the KPI details is that new report that's provided in Performance Point Services 2010 that lists out for each KPI what the different metrics are, the type of measures it has, and then what the different um, thresholds are, as they listed here, the status band, to know what it is. Once we've gone ahead and finished up our um, clicking through all of the different SharePoint pieces, this is where the business person and user can go ahead and take that information and go back to their business and utilize that information and wrap it up. Finally, we'll get to some implementation and design best practices. Once we've got everything set up, we've pushed everything out there, 
Um, there's a few things that you want to keep into or take into account as you are putting together your dashboard. Um, these are just a few implementation and design best practices that uh, we faced as we've put different um, applications together and put up some business intelligence SharePoint solutions. So the first one is, is you must, must, must put up um, time intelligence functions to always show the most recent data. There's nothing more frustrating than trying to pull up a report and having the data be um, a much older set of information. You always want it to show the most recent data, have the most recent time frame to be able to show that information. Make sure you add filters to assist the users and only see the data that they really care about. And those filters could be things like departments that we were talking about. It could be a particular location. Um, or it could even be a, a category or a grouping. You want to make sure you're using your SharePoint security to restrict access to the data elements. Now, because this performance point services is so tightly tied into and it's part of SharePoint, that means that to be able to show the different items, the different dashboards, and the different pages, you can use the SharePoint security that you already have in place. So only, the only people that should be seeing this very important data are the people that need it to do their job. Remember in general design principles, um, white space is key. Don't overload your users with all sorts of information thrown in there. Um, you want to make sure that they are able to get in quickly, see the information they need, and get out. That being said, don't depend on color differentiation, um, not only from a um, a colorblind perspective, you want to make sure that it's, it's fully accessible there, um, but if you have anybody that is on a mobile device or um, something where the colors may not be um, as clear as they were when you developed them, you want, to be ensure, you want to ensure that you have other signals to be able to let people know whether things are better or worse. And then finally, simple is better. Make sure that um, you're not overloading people with a lot of information that they don't need. And you really want it to work with your business users on this, um, especially because they're the ones that will be um, uploading the different web parts and the different dashboards. Make sure that the template that you're providing them or the data that you're providing them, that you've got that um, uh, able to be taken uh, as quickly and as easy as possible for them. And then finally, aggregate your data at a very high level and drill down to see the details. This is how we showed within the financial organization. We started at a very high level scorecard at a, a rolled up level, drilled down into a list of customers, and then drilled down even more into a particular customer. This makes it a lot easier for people to get the exact information that they need. And I think that will wrap up our presentation for today. Um, there's some information that we have uh, for you all. Um, please go visit the Ironworks blog. Both addresses are listed there. Fit and Finish will be more of our design and user experience type uh, posts. And then under the hood is going to be more on the technology side of things. Uh, specifically, the, the solution that we showed today with the financial organization is uh, an example of our 360 customer intelligence solution. It's a way to provide a full 360 degree view of uh, your organization and see exactly how all of the customers are. And then finally, if you have any questions about Microsoft Business Intelligence at Ironworks, please contact Keith Long, klong at ironworks.com, and he can help you with that information. And with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Keith, and we'll take some questions. Thanks, Jessica. Uh, we've got just a few questions that came through, so we'll, we'll try and work those in here now while we have a few minutes left. Uh, the first question uh, was, what can we do with source control? Is there a way to store some of this, uh, these act, um, items in source control, Visual Source Safe, TFS, things like that? Yeah, um, that's a, a great question, um, one that actually a lot of people ask. Um, unfortunately, there's no um, built-in source control system within Dashboard Designer. Because um, Microsoft is considering more, that more of an end-user tool, they don't actually um, put that in. But 
they um, uh, you definitely can take those individual pieces, um, just as regular files, and put those into source control as well. And keep in mind that each of the individual elements that you're putting up into SharePoint has the version control uh, within SharePoint that you have there. So if you have any uh, backups or maintenance plans from a SharePoint perspective, your performance point web parts will be included in that. So uh, another question that we got was, uh, what are the differences between Performance Point Server 2007 and 2010? Oh, great. Um, yeah, the, the Performance Point Server 2007 came out in, as it sounds like, 2007, and it was actually a product. So you were able to uh, publish your dashboards into SharePoint, but it was a separate item. Now that it's in um, 2010, the performance point services that we have, um, they've tied it even more tightly into SharePoint. So you're going to only work with that one server. So you don't need another um, box or anything to run the performance point database. There are also a bunch of new features. They added a decomposition tree, which is the um, – um, kind of the, the drill down boxes. So you start at a high level and it gives you uh, percentages of um, a different set of, of drill down options. And you can select one of those and then you get all of the next layer of drill downs within those and on down the line and you get what looks like a full tree and really lets you narrow the information down. The time intelligence functions, they did some more uh, features in those. We mentioned a couple of those as, as we go on. Uh, the KPI detail report, that was a, a new report that they created. Um, they added some more um, filter features, so um, uh, doing some percentages of the top end number or bottom end number that you can do um, along those lines with the filter side of things. They did retire a few things. You can no longer use uh, analysis services. Um, they, um, you no longer can use 32-bit architecture because it's in SharePoint, and that's all 64-bit. Um, and also the pivot table and pivot chart that they had in 2007 is no longer available. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's, there's some others as well, but those are going to give you kind of the highest level of the, the differentiations between those, those values. So one of the next questions that we have is, are there uh, any concentrated graphic elements such as sparkle, uh, spark lines available in the dashboard designer? Concentrated graphic elements. Um, if you're meaning... Um, the spark lines. Yeah. Um, uh, Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to do that within each particular piece of data. Um, you can absolutely create a series of reports, um, which is actually how you had to do it in, in reporting services um, a while ago um, to be able to do that. Um, and that, that should work. So the, the next question we have is, is it possible to run uh, designer with just a data warehouse and not a uh, uh, SAS queue? Yes, you absolutely can. Um, the a data source that you have there will be a regular SQL Server table, um, and you can bring that information in. The thing where it starts to get a little bit funny if you're using um, a regular SQL Server table rather than analysis services is with some of the time intelligence functions. Um, you really have to make sure you have all of the different pieces within your, um, all the different levels within your SQL Server table. Man, if you could um, do that um, information within the um, analysis services, it's already built in for you. So in the SQL Server table, you have to have every single level, or you can't do that up and down type version. I mean, you can, it's just you have to make sure everything's there for it. So you absolutely can. A couple more questions here. Um, do you have any recommended resources for designing dashboards? Absolutely. Um, there are quite a few books out there. 
um, from a designing perspective. Um, anything out there by uh, Tufty is absolutely recommended. And anything also out there by Stephen Few. Um, in particular, there is one book called Information Dashboard Design. Um, it's Stephen Few, if you um, search for that, you, it'll immediately come up. It just has some really great principles um, for that. And one last question. Um, how do you know if you need a dashboard or performance management? Yeah, um, it's actually one of the things that, that uh, we get uh, questions about, uh, about a lot um, because it, it's a little bit hard to know um, what uh, if it's something that you need. Um, your company definitely has to be ready and willing to embrace uh, this um, methodology to be able to use it. So you have to be uh, ready to take in that information, to really spend some time looking into it and looking at that information. Um, you have to be, have the company able to quickly make changes. So once they've seen that information um, and know what the areas of concern are, to be able to quickly turn around and act on it. Um, if there is uh, any sort of issues they have with uh, data issues, data concerns, um, differing reports, um, there, that's always a great place to where you want to get performance management set in. Um, it's definitely something to, to take a look at. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit biased because um, I think it's, it's always a good thing to, to get a dashboard and performance management in, in place. Um, and for most companies, it definitely will be helpful if it's something that, that you're able to work with. I guess we have uh, one other question that did just pop up. Um, how easy is it for a SharePoint 2010 user to create their own uh, performance management system without a consultant? It's definitely something that can, um, it, it takes some work. Um, uh, depending on what the, the end user is, the SharePoint 2010 user is that we're talking about, if they are a, um, a more of an end user, um, it's probably not going to be something they're going to want to take on themselves. So you're definitely going to want some sort of um, um, architect to come in and, and when I say come in, it, it could be your own architect. It does not have to be necessarily a consultant. Um, but someone to really take a responsibility of the system. Because you have to remember, it's not only and performance point services, it's the entire system. It's the um, being able to go through and make sure that um, you've got someone to, uh, to own it, to take um, into account all the different attributes and be able to make sure that everybody's on target and you have the ability to really get to that information and, and act on it. Um, so from a user perspective, doing the dashboards, not a problem at all, but actually getting that management side of things in place, that's where you need to have somebody who can really um, uh, take it over. So with that, um, I think we're, we're running out of time here. Uh, if you do have any other questions, uh, please feel free to uh, email me, kalon at ironworks.com. Uh, we'll certainly be happy to get back with you on any other questions you might have. And uh, we thank you all for joining us and look forward to talking to you in the future.